So you and I only just spoke a couple days, and for people that are not familiar, I actually moved to Austin from Brooklyn a couple years ago, and that's what, that was my first introduction to Torchy's Tacos, and I've been hooked ever since. But what really stuck, stuck out to me is every Torchy's is pretty unique, and we have, we're going to show these images up on the background here. You know, we, obviously we're talking a lot about restaurant design. Um, you guys have some really cool, funky designs. We're going to get into that, um, but. Your story is awesome because you started from here in Austin with one food truck and now over 100 locations in 14 states. Um, really quick, just tell us, what, you, what were the lessons learned over this past 17 years? <laughs> <laughs> what lesson was it learned? Um, you know, a lot has been learned, obviously. I think I really um, I had a passion for food. I'm a chef by trade. Uh, my first job, I was a fry cook at Popeye's Fried Chicken. I was 13. I lied on my application so I could get a job. Huh. Um, and I uh, just have always just loved food and uh, really, really especially uh, street food, uh, mm -hmm. street food culture. You think about the cities you go to and um, you ask someone on the corner, hey, where should I go eat? And, you know, typically they're like, oh, there's a great pizza joint around the corner. And I kind of wanted that vibe. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, um, you know, I, people ask me sometimes, hey, did you have regrets or this and that? And, you know, I, I used to sometimes think, well, it would have been nice if I had some more money because, you know, back then, yeah, I mean, even now, if you start a new concept, they're not actually doling money out at the banks to yeah. uh, help you open a restaurant. And, um, but I think in the same sense, like it made me really hungry to go out and get business. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I maxed out my credit cards. I took a loan on my house. I pretty much put everything on black um, and said, okay, this has got to work. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, so that, uh, you know, I learned a lot from that. Um, you know, one of our core values in the company is tenacity. So obviously I started the company with a ton of tenacity. And just, you know, I was relentless, you know. I, I had an old red Vespa scooter, and I'd load it, load the back of it up with chips and salsa, and I'd hand out chips and salsa to every dentist's office, tire shop, didn't matter who you were. Yeah. I was shoving food in your face just to get people to try the food so we could, you know, build a business. So for you going from the first location, which was a truck, to, you know, multiple brick-and-mortar locations, what do you say was the toughest period, right? Was it getting from three or four location, getting to that three or four to say 10, or what was the, the kind of the, the real learnings and the, the pain points along the, that growth trajectory? Well, you know, it's funny. I think there's this misconception that like, oh, you've gotten to a certain level, you've somehow arrived. And, you know, I mean, I think all of us could admit here that like the last three years have probably been the toughest three years in the history mm -hmm. of restaurants. So this last three years has been very tough. Yeah. Um, obviously that first year or two was very tough, um, just in terms of just, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any financial backing, so I was literally week to week, paycheck to paycheck, a lot of stress with that. Um, I mean, there were literally, you know, payday was on Friday and there'd be Wednesdays. I'd be looking at my checking account, like there's no way I'm going to make payroll on Friday. And, uh, you know, we'd get some catering order, mm -hmm. a write-up in the you know, local newspaper, and we'd get just enough so I, paychecks wouldn't bounce. Um, and so those days were tough. Um, and we've, just, we've had different life cycles of where you know, things would get tough. We'd have to adjust, learn. Um, you know, anytime you expand, and we expand pretty quickly throughout our history. I mean, you know, we've only been in business for, call it 17 years now. Mm -hmm. and got over 100 locations. That's a lot of expansion over that time period. So we've definitely had, you know, heartaches and hardships along the way, um, along with a lot of the success. Yeah. So as I was mentioning earlier, you know, if you look at the, at the locations, you guys have a pretty funky design. Can you tell us a little just about the name, Torchies, and obviously the baby devil? What's the origin there? Uh, so, you know, we, we like to say if you've been to one Torchies, you've been to one Torchies. Um, and uh, we kind of do that on purpose. Um, you know, the, the formats within the restaurant are the same, um, you know, in terms of like the kitchen layout and the way the bar is mm -hmm. laid out. But we definitely try to do things different in terms of the look and feel. Um, 
You know, Torchies actually came from my original business partner. Um, he uh, actually had, back in the 90s, had maybe had a little too much to drink. Um, <laughs> and he was at a, a late night um, taco place here in Austin. And he had a vision, if you will, of kind of a, a Airstream with neon torches and flames coming out of the Y. And that name just sort of stuck in the back of his head. He just kind of forgot about it and put it away. And we were trying to come up with names. He literally woke up one morning. He was like, dude, I got the name. I got the name. And we talked about it. And, and he said it. And I was like, holy cow, that's it. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we were very purposeful, even though we started in a taco truck, about making sure that we had good branding and a good feel. And yeah. We wanted a good logo. And um, I came up with the, the baby devil. We, we, we talked about, like, you know, an actual torch. We talked about pitchforks. Same kind of epiphany. I, you know, woke up in the morning and kind of first thought of the day, I was kind of battling my head, like, what should it be? And it just came to me that, like, this kind of cute little baby devil would represent Torchy Perfect. And yeah. uh, I told him that. And, and we. You didn't piss off any religious groups? Like, I'm not sending my kid into that <laughs> devil worshiping taco place. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to lie. We've had some hate mail uh, here and there. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think uh, we have, uh, we I, actually, we have one drive through location. Well, we have a couple now, but our first one. Uh, we actually got a Bible thrown at the lady at the register. So uh, people, people are pretty overzealous. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you hit on it before, and I, I like that. You know, if you've been to One Torchies, you've been to One Torchies. And, you know, we, we produce a lot of content, retail spaces, restaurant spaces, hotel spaces. And there's a lot of brands that, you know, a lot of their locations look the same. And... That's what I think is something that gives you guys, you know, I think a competitive advantage outside of, of course, the wonderful tacos. Um, but also your colleague who's also here in the room, Pete Terry's, you both have, you know, some really unique restaurant designs that I think stand out. And I think that that's something that I think a lot of restaurant chains like to, would like to do, but I guess it gets more expensive to do it. And uh, do you find that, you know, in terms of always, you know, giving each location, I guess, some unique design uh, designs um, do you factor that into the kind of what you're doing and has it become more expensive or you figure out ways to keep the, the development cost down? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's cracked the code this last couple of years. Um, I mean, we're probably paying 30, 35% more than we were even two years ago to yeah. build out our restaurants. Um, so I, that, that, that part's gotten challenging. We, um, we try to sort of incorporate, you know, some of our roots, you know, you think about, you know, we started kind of in a food truck on the street. Mm -hmm. um, so we, there's a lot of sort of elements of that in our, we use graffiti and things like that. Um, but then we also have this kind of sort of modern, sort of elegant piece to our restaurants as well. And that sort of kind of pays ode to our foods, very chef driven. Yep. Um, I created all the recipes and um, everything's made from scratch, um, you know. And so every day in every kitchen, uh, we make it all from scratch. Um, so we kind of, you know, pay towards that. I, I, it, it, is, it is challenging and I, I think as we've evolved, we've, maybe some of that creativity slimmed down a little bit, sure. you know, as you start to really expand. But we still have quite a big palette in terms of what we can use. And um, we've kind of honed in on, you know, different elements. And then we just figure out ways we can place them different in the store so that it gives each restaurant its own unique feel. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, and again, I only experienced torches for the first time two years ago. So that's 15 years into your existence. But I can see that there's a strong brand identity. There's a strong vibe. You can even see it with your, with your staff and your workforce. And what we didn't hit on, it's on your hat, is that your slogan is you guys have damn good tacos. That's actually what we titled this session, what it means to be damn good. So how did that come about? And what, what, is, what does damn good mean to Mike Ripka? So that's actually our mission statement, to be damn good. Uh, real simple, real succinct. Uh, kind of applies to everything. Um, that actually came from our customers um, in the early days of mm -hmm. opening. My original logo, I kind of 
my very badly designed skills designed it. Um, <laughs> and I, eventually, after about a month of being open, got an actual graphic designer to help us. But um, the damn good came from our customers. And, um, you know, they would literally come up and say, damn, these tacos are good. Damn, these tacos are good. And, and so we decided to put it there. And, um, you know, mainly it, it was sort of this guiding light of like, you know, if you're going to say it's damn good, it better be damn good. So mm -hmm. it was really kind of a way to raise our own standard in terms of making sure that we delivered on an extra very high level to our guests. And, um, you know, that, that was really the purpose behind it. Um, and, um, and that's been, you know, we have such a great culture in our company, especially around the food and, um, you know, people are super passionate. Like our prep cooks are super passionate about any time they make a recipe, taking tasting spoons to the manager. And, you know, when, when stuff is great, we celebrate it, make a really big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, recipe books out every station all day long, making mm -hmm. sure that stuff's done correctly. Um, so it's really allowed us to kind of really have a high level in terms of that. Yeah. So you hit on before, you know, of course, the pandemic and, you know, I guess a lot, and we've been talking about it here a lot today about all the innovation and disruption um, that has happened, over, of course, over the last few years. Are anything do you see changing in terms of the customers for you in terms of when it comes down to convenience? Are you doing any more designs now with pickup windows or are you looking for more drive through locations or... We're not really a drive through brand. We've done a few and we've actually, some of the ones we tried, we've actually flipped to more of a pickup window. Uh, we just, we don't have the, the ticket times to be able to do that because we make everything from order, uh, make everything to order. And so, um, you know, we've definitely leaned into some of that. Um, you know, we're not like, oh, every restaurant from now on is going to have a pickup window. I, I wouldn't say that, but um, we've uh, been doing, uh, yeah, we got the shelves like everybody else. Um, that's definitely helped. Um, yeah, we've kind of taken the approach where the shelves are more for um, our guests. And then, you know, we'll keep like the DoorDash and third party guys behind the counter. Uh, okay. and, and the main reason we do that is we've found we've had a lot more uh, inaccuracies where they grab the wrong they grab order the wrong if we order. leave it out yeah. front. Um, and uh, so that helps. And it also helps us develop that relationship with those um, folks and um, because they're, you know, they're an extension of your brand, basically, if they're going to deliver your food somewhere. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we do, uh, you know, we've also been testing these uh, pass-through cubbies. So basically the shelves on steroids um, and they're right next to the expo station. So that way um, we can just pass them right through to the cubbies and yep. you've got see-through into the kitchen. It also gives um, our staff a chance to interact with the guest and vice versa. So if they need something else or if they have questions, someone's right there, they can help them. Um, and it's not some shelf just kind of off in the corner. Yeah, so I know from the locations that I go to, I mean, you guys do have a pretty good percentage of people dining in the restaurant, right? Like, Yeah, we, we definitely favor more to dine in for sure. Okay. So on the topic of scaling, you know, I guess as you get to over 100, 100 locations now in, in 14 states, how do you maintain that, you know, the same vibe as you go into different states? You know, you're obviously started here in Austin, expanded in Texas, and now you're in Florida and a bunch of other states. Do you find that that's challenging or for you as kind of, you know, the founder, like do you have to make any compromises to, you know, as you lo launch new locations um, to kind of keep the, the same vibe of, of Torchies? You know, not not too much. Um, I think, you know, it, it, we're in a people business, right? So it's really about the people you hire. Uh, we haven't gotten to robots quite yet. Uh, we're we moving there. Um, but we're really in the people business. So we invest a ton of money in training. Um, we invest a lot in the development of our folks. Mm -hmm. um, we, we try to do a lot of internal promotes mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, a new store has, uh, you know, at least one person on the management team that's been baked into our system. Mm -hmm. Can't always do that, but we try to wherever we can. Uh, which allows for a lot of growth and opportunity in the company in terms of development. So you have the managing partners program, right? Or, yeah, 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 we do that. So each of our, um, you know, what 
most people will call a GM, we call a managing partner. So they share in the profits of the business. Um, and uh, that works out really well. It's had a lot of buy-in from our folks. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that helps as well. And then, um, you know, really just, um, you know, honing in on that training, making sure that, you know, our folks got what they need to, to, do, to do the right stuff for the right reasons. So workforce, of course, is a big topic, you know, in the industry. Have you guys been still, like, I guess your peers, struggling on, on the workforce front? Or? Knock on wood, we've done pretty good on that front. Okay. I mean, we've, we've had a month or two here where we've struggled. Um, again, like I said, we focus real high on our culture, um, very people first, uh, making sure that our folks are taken care of. Um, we, we pay very competitively, mm -hmm. um, although that bar keeps raising, as you guys all know. Yeah. Uh, every time you turn around, someone's offering a dollar more somewhere else. So we've had our challenges with that um, as well. Um, an another thing we do is we do a tip share with all our employees, um, which really helps out a lot. So in, in a lot of restaurants, that ends up being another four or five bucks an hour, so. Yeah, but from what I understand, you're an accessible CEO that like staff can actually reach out to you, right? I got the open door policy. Anybody, anywhere can give me a call anytime. Anyone? Anyone. <laughs> the dishwasher in Dallas can call me if he needs to. Well, that, well that's obviously a good thing. Um, but in terms of you know efficiency and obviously in the workforce, are there any things that you're looking to do to potentially operate the restaurants with maybe some less bodies? Are you looking at any automation, robotics, or? Yeah, we're actually in the middle of what we call Project Blue Sky. Blue skies ahead, everybody. Um, <laughs> and uh, that that is uh, you know basically some menu optimization, um, and then also looking at um, different menu or different kitchen layouts as well as some automated equipment and things like that that we can lean into. We're about to, I'll be in the kitchen probably the next six weeks myself, working on all that um, and, uh, you know, making sure that we get that right and figure that out. It's gonna, it's, it's not gonna be easier on our guests because there's gonna be some things that we have to take off the menu. Um, like I said, we're very scratch made. I'm not willing to compromise on that. Yep. Um, so, you know, in order to make it easier, we got to have less items. So, and get more out of the ones we're actually using. So, trying to figure out that right balance. We're about to do a bunch of customer intercepts to kind of get some feedback and make sure that, you know, at least our customers willing and open to where we're thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, you know, we'll have kind of what that's going to be, at least for the future, going probably finish in the next eight weeks. Then we'll have to put that in our schedule of development and get it in test. So I find that interesting. You said that you're gonna spend the next six weeks in the kitchen. So obviously that's where your passion lies, right? As a, as a chef. Yeah. Do you find now as, you know, as CEO of, of a large chain that you, it's, it's tough to kind of be in the kitchen and working on menu stuff as well as the business? You know, yes and no. I mean, we, I've got a, a great team. Um, you know, I learned early on in my career, hire, hire people that are better than you. Um, and uh, so I've really tried to do that. Um, I, you know, I couldn't stay there forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't really, you, you won't see me like cooking on the line in our restaurants, of course, yeah. but when it comes to R&D stuff, I'm, I'm definitely involved. Um, you know, I'll, I'm not going to be there nine to five for the next six weeks, but I'll, I'll definitely be there and involved yeah. quite a bit. So. Cool. So just to hit on the, on the development side of things, uh, cost-wise, we actually had some roundtables today, uh, a number of roundtables in here just on that topic because that's the number one thing that a lot of the people in this room are interested in. Um, how are you managing that? Anything interesting that you guys are doing to kind of get ahead of that? I know there's no silver bullet, but maybe you have one for us. <laughs> I mean, I wish I did. Um, you know, I mean, we... We definitely uh, took it in the pants last year from a margin perspective. Um, I think we were a little late to the game on pricing, um, yeah. and uh, which could argue could have helped us too. Our transactions perform better than the industry, but um, you know we we've. We do a lot of uh, pre-buying, um, like we've got a year's worth of switch gear for our build-outs. We've pre-ordered HVAC systems with our, you know, companies that we work with. 
Uh, we do a lot of uh, long-term buying in terms of, you know, food and meat mm-hmm. and chicken and things like that. Um, so that we've done as much of that where we can um, to kind of at least make sure we know we've got product. Yep. Um, so, but it hasn't, it hasn't been easy. Um, yeah. You know, I think one thing that's helped us a little bit is because we're so from scratch. We've got a little more flexibility, so we can pivot to different partners if we need to, at least from a food side. Yeah, uh, We're not so locked in to so many proprietary items, um, which helps us. But, um, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a dogfight out there for all of us. I mean, it's been really hard. And have you of... had to raise any prices in the menus? Or... Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've taken, last year we took about 10% price. 10%, so. yeah. And how do you figure that out? Like, where's, what's the bar? Right? I know there's been some not naming some other companies. I mean, I don't know that it's been a real science necessarily. Yeah. It's been, it, it had more to do with just, you know, kind of, you know, we look at a lot of competitive analysis, kind of where people are at. You also got to factor in, you know, I mean, wage rates just went through the roof this last couple of years, um, and especially the last 18 months. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, food last year was just ridiculous. Um, and um, so we just, you know, methodically kept taking it up. I think we took a price increase just about every quarter this last year. Did you? Yeah. Um, and, uh you know, I think this year we're probably going to try to stay flat if we can. Um, I think, you know, there's, I don't, maybe you guys are seeing this, you know, transactions are a little, a little stable, if not flat and not deflated, um, yeah. you know, de- kind of depends on the market, I think. But um, I think trans for everyone's going to be a dogfight this year just because, um, you know, there's so much talk out there about the economy and everything else. And, and, you know, a lot of job loss out there. So what's your outlook for like the next couple of years? You think we're going to see costs come down a little bit or? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we've seen, we've seen, at least in our brand, we've seen food come down. Um, I think labor is probably flat this next year. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to see, um, you know, build costs go back down. I, I don't, you know, usually once it I raises, think everybody in this room yeah, once it, would, once would it, like to see that. <laughs> once it raises up, it tends to not want to go back down again. Uh, but I do think, um, you know, that seems to be, at least the availability of things seem to be getting more available. Um, you know, I mean, we've had, uh, you know, I, I talked to you about those switch gears. Like last year, we, we had to punt seven locations in our development plan. Yeah. Just... And, uh, a lot of it was landlord uh, driven, and then some of it was, you know, like the switch gears. We had ordered a year before that, and still we're waiting on them to to get in so we could open our doors and just different things like that. I, I think it's going to be bumpy this next year on all levels. I think we'll we'll um, see a lot of this, um, and you know, the hope is at least from a lot of the finance guys and bankers and stuff I talk out there that you know things will start to hopefully ramp up in in twenty four. But this year is probably going to be bumpy for all of us. Put yeah. your seatbelts on. Yeah, um, and uh, on the topic of expansion, so you guys are in fourteen states. Um, where do you see, like, in the next five, ten years? Like, what's do you have an idea? Kind of double doubling the portfolio, or so we're we we kind of we're probably you know we're committed to about a ten to fifteen percent growth rate um, okay. year over year. Um, we'd like to stay in that range, um, and we may or may not be able to speed that up a little bit. I just you know I don't like getting too over our skis when it comes to development. Um, I think a lot of people, they get excited, they get hungry, um, you know, they sell maybe more than what they can deliver. Yep. Um, I think a lot's got to change from today's environment to get some stability, especially to even depend on any more growth than that, just yeah. because, you know, you watch in the, uh, you know, people report, I mean, so many people missed their targets this last year, it's just really hard to hard to nail. Yeah. Um, so I think too, like, you know, when you're talking to investors and stuff, you really need to talk more in, in ranges versus a certain number. Um, just cause there's too much 
just too much um, kind of uncertainty right now to really depend on. Yeah, I was talking with somebody yesterday, and I didn't realize it. Whataburgers, they're here. I don't know if they're in the Whataburger in the room. How many locations do you guys have in Texas? Texas? Yeah. 700. Goddamn. That's crazy. That's Just a, in the state of Texas. That's a lot. So why go to 14 states? You can open up 700 torches. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to travel as far. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need, we, I think Whataburger and certain brands, you know, they can, you know, they got smaller rings so they, where they don't cannibalize on themselves. Yeah. Um, we have pretty high AUVs. Our AUVs are, you know, 3.8, 3.9 per unit. Mm -hmm. um, so we, uh, you know, you, you got to space those out a little bit to keep those up there, um, you know. But we usually try to keep our spacing, you know, five miles is about as far as, as close as we like to get. Well, there's a lot more taco places in Texas than there are burger places, yeah, too, so there's yeah. more competition out yes, there, yes, especially yeah. in Austin. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of taco places for sure. Yeah, would, you, would it be smart to start a taco concept today in Austin? I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, you know it depends on how, how, how good the food is, I guess. So we, we have a couple of minutes left. And if we have a minute for if, if anybody has any burning questions, we can you know, answer them. But I got a couple of rapid fire questions for you. All so right, here it. we go. Really, um, flour or corn? Corn. Why? I don't do a lot of gluten. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, what's your most? What's the most profitable uh, Torchy's location? Uh, let's see. Right now, it's uh, Frisco. Frisco. Interesting. We're actually doing an event up there um, in a few weeks, and that's like a happening spot, actually. Yeah. yeah interesting. Um, best tacos in Austin besides Torchy's? Veracruz. Veracruz, all right, great breakfast tacos. If you were to start a new concept, what cuisine? Something a little more simpler. <laughs> <laughs> we have nine proteins on our menu today. You know, I'm jealous of all you chicken guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you put crack cocaine in your queso? Uh, yeah, that's the little white stuff we put on top. <laughs> Um, favorite band? Ooh, Metallica. Metallica. All right, cool. There you go. Um, your biggest pet peeve about the restaurant industry today? Uh, my biggest pet peeve. I think I think people are are overcorrecting when it comes to COVID. I, th I think people generally still want to dine in most of the time. I think, I think third-party delivery, I don't know how, how, I think it'll have a place. I just, I don't, it's getting too cost prohibitive. Yeah. No one's really figured out how to make the last mile delivery profitable. Um, I think, I don't know, I just think people are making a lot of changes, maybe too much, leaning into too much of that over a crisis that happened over two years. So, and we didn't hit on this, but ghost kitchens, do you guys do any of that? No. Right. Not a fan. Not a fan. Got it. Are you a basketball fan? So so, yeah. Who's going to win tonight, UConn or San Diego? Uh, I'm going to go San Diego. San Diego. OK. My partner, Mike, is on the way right now. He's a UConn guy to go watch uh, okay. the game. OK. Well, so they've, they've won a bunch. Let's give, an, <laughs> let's give another guy a chance. <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the audience out here? And I can't see. Someone's got a question. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna get you a oh, microphone. Yeah, get the Hang microphone on. over there. I'm not shy. It's good to see everybody. Can you see actually see them with the? I can see them <laughs> over the haze. Yeah, good call on Metallica, by the way. Yeah, um, there you go. How much uh, pushback do you get in communities putting a little baby devil up on the, a signpost in certain places? Do you ever get pushback on that? Uh, not too much. We've gotten pushed back on, on damn good once or twice. Uh, we used to put it very prominently so that you could see it shining out of the restaurant. We've actually dialed that back. That's one of the, the sort of heartbreakers as being the founder is, you know, some of the compromises you have to make. So we still have it in our restaurants. We just don't shine it 
to the outside. You can still see it if you're in the restaurant. So, got it. Well, you have that one location. I think it's up at Mueller. Mueller. How do you? Mueller. Yeah. And you've got the the one that's actually like a big devil that's spinning around on the top. Yes. Of the restaurant. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, do we have any any additional questions? There's one more over there. Uh, building on the the last presentation, what music do you play in your restaurants? Uh, <laughs> uh, Metallica. Metallica. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> Kill them all. Now, actually, we we play a lot of uh, alt rock. Probably is kind of the main genre we play. Um, yeah, you know, it's just kind of level and, and easy. I, I did like your presentation, so. Yeah. Um, and I can't see. Do we have any more questions, Jason? Hang on a minute. Yep. One more. <laughs> oh, you got to be careful. This is media, so whatever you say is probably going to show up in front. That's right. I burned him before, don't worry. Um, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, you know, there, there was a time when the restaurant industry was full of founder-led brands. Not very frequent these days. I mean, how do you think that that actually helps you guys, the fact that you're involved day to day, you know, and you get to see and oversee all these things that we're talking about as somebody who was there really from the beginning with that vision? Um, I think it does. It does make a difference. Um, you know, I've, I think one thing is, you know, I've been and worked every position that every employee has worked in the business, literally. Like, you know, I did payroll. Um, I washed dishes. I cooked. I cleaned. I bust tables. Um, you created the logo. I helped create the logo. <laughs> um, you know, I you know, did menus, I helped design the website, you know, I, I did all that stuff. And, um, and so I think there's some uh, validity there. Um, and then also, like, I think it's really helped me to, you know, embrace people that are really good at what they do in their job and letting them just flourish, you know, like, okay, you're a badass finance guy, like, Go to town, right? Show me some stuff. I want to learn, you know? And um, when you do that and let people shine, um, it really, I think, lifts up the entire team. Yeah, I agree. Well, that was a, uh, I think we're out of time, but oh, are we have one, one more? more? Yeah. Quick question. So as a founder, right, what compromise that you actually made to your team that you, you know, um, that's that's kind of hurting, and uh, but you still compromise. So, like, if I made compromises that like that have hurt operation the or design or any anything. I mean, we haven't compromised that much, to be honest with you. Um, we've been um, we made changes, but I wouldn't call them compromises. Um, we've made changes in terms of. You know, when we started, we weren't doing these huge volumes, you know, and, and now we've got some stores that, you know, do five, five and a half million, which is a lot of business for us. So yeah. we've had to make some changes to adapt to that to make sure that we can handle the business. Um, and I wouldn't call those compromises. They're just changes as the business has evolved. Well, listen, Mike, I, I know you, your time, we kept you a little late here, but this has been a real treat to have you with us, and uh, it's awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.